let's say hello to the victorious hurricane Shane Burgos, kind enough to join us. Shane, how are you, my man? Thank you for doing this. I'm good, brother. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. How are we feeling? How's the face? How are the hands? How's the body? And the body's, I just got back from the gym. The body's actually pretty damn good. My, my legs are a little sore still, but uh, other than that, some, some bruises, nothing serious. Just got back from the gym. No day off for you. You can't chill for one day. <laughs> I, I, I had Sunday off. It was just a light day. Just, just a light lift. Nothing, nothing too crazy. I'm just taking it easy. Golly. Uh, well, congrats on the win. Uh, tougher than you thought it would be? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't expect it to go necessarily like that. Like my, my game plan necessarily wasn't to take him down right off the bat, but once we got in that position, I, I felt strong and I felt confident there. And then after that second round, my legs just shut off. It was a, it was a really weird experience for me. I never felt anything like, like that before. What, what do you think happened? I was squeezing as hard as I could trying to get that finish. I really put a lot of pressure on myself, which, which is hundred percent fine now, but I put a lot of pressure on myself to get a finish in this fight. I didn't want to just get another decision win. Um, obviously, that's that's ended up that that's what happened, which I'm fucking pissed about. But I really wanted that that fucking finish. I wanted it in the first round. I thought I had it. He escaped. Great job by him. And then the second round, I really thought I had it. And same shit. And then once the bell rang, I didn't. I didn't. My legs felt fine during the during the entire round. It didn't feel anything until the round ended. And I stood up and I was like, oh, "What the fuck is that?" Uh -huh. It felt similar to like when we do when, when I do my my airdyne sprints. And uh, like the last one, you always kill it. And then the last one, you can barely walk it. It felt like that. And then I, <laughs> you may imagine doing that and then having to go fight right after. My legs yeah. were like jello. It was, it was bad. How worried were you in the third round? Because obviously that was his best round. Uh, what do you, I mean, you're yeah, trying to survive. Sure. You, you don't want to lose the fight now. That would be a horrible turn of events. But what are you thinking in that round? I was thinking, sitting in the corner, my coaches are like, how you feeling? I'm like, I'm great. I'm good. Just psyching myself up, getting ready. Because I know like, it's going to be five minutes of hell because I know in his mind, he's going to, he's, he's thinking he's down to nothing. So I know he's going to come out, come out fucking hot right off the gate, just like he did. So, uh, I fully expected that, but I kept telling myself it's five minutes of hell, put yourself to hell for fucking five minutes. And, I, and there's nothing I can't do for five minutes. So I just had to suck it up for five minutes. And, um, I was still able to get a takedown at the end of that round. Um, obviously not even remotely close to happy. I'm actually like sick to my stomach when I think about that round, just because of the way my body fucking failed me like that. Like my, I've never felt any kind of lactic acid buildup where, just taking steps was fucking exhausting. Wow. And so now, I mean, you're okay now? Totally wore off? Yeah. No, yeah. It wore off backstage. Backstage, I had to sit down for like 15, 20 minutes, and then I was 100% fine. At the media and everything, I was like, that was just fucking frustrating. Wow. Um, were you worried that they would give him a 10-8 in that round, and then it would be a draw across the board? That didn't, that didn't even cross my mind, honestly. And I, and I thought that the, the second round for me was pretty dominant, too. Mm -hmm. So... I, I, just, I thought it was going to be 10 nines all, all across. So I, I didn't even think about that until after people started saying, it. I was like, ah, I, I still haven't watched it back though, honestly. Okay. Um, one thing that I heard you say afterwards, which I thought was really interesting. You really don't like fighting late huh? like you said, last time you fought in New York, 10 30, 10 45 is way yeah. too late. So you actually really liked the afternoon card. Oh yeah. I, I loved it. I loved it. Maybe like an hour later, maybe we fought like a three 30 instead of two 30. But uh, last time I fought long, I fought, fought at four. And this time too, I felt I felt phenomenal. My warm up was awesome. I got no excuses or anything like that. Like, it, I'll take that time all day. The fucking ten forty five, man. You're sitting around waiting all day. It's just on your mind. We're playing, and you're like, yeah. I got to calm down. I'm not fighting for another twelve hours. Let me like relax. So that I'm, I'll take that any day. So next fight, maybe maybe I'll get me out in like Vegas or something like that. Yeah. So you you actually, even though like uh, so much was made, undefeated in New York, now seven and zero in the state of New York, you actually would prefer not to fight in Madison Square Garden in November. It feels like to me. I like being the king of New York. Don't get me wrong. But on the other hand, I, I don't like fighting late. I just, I, I, it's a preference. If I had to choose, obviously I would take the later, later time. But if we get this contract settled and, and uh, they offer me the date, how can I say no? I feel like it, it's it, my, my family would be pissed if I said, no, I got too many fans, friends right. and family that come out. I'm going to ask you about the contract in a second, but uh, have you noticed like a lot of the New York guys, a lot of them didn't have success here. You know, like Wyman never had success. It, it, it's been tough. I feel like you're like one of the lone didn't guys, that. right? Are you like the only one? I didn't one? notice that actually. I, 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 I don't know what the stats are exactly, but I feel like I have to be like by far the the most. Yes. What, what, I mean, what, like who, who's had more fights in New York than me? I don't think anyone's come no. close, right? And no one's had even remotely yeah. close to the success that you have had. I mean, yeah, Weidman yeah, had the two losses at Madison Square Garden. Aljo hasn't been able to fight here. I mean, it's just been, I feel like it's just been tough for the New York guys and you're the one guy who has just killed it here. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I can't, I can't lose New York. So I'm not going to say no if they say MSG, right? <laughs> so you revealed afterwards 
that that was the last fight on your deal. Uh, we didn't know about this going in. Did that add more pressure? You want to go, you know, you want to go on, you know, you want to go out, you want to look good. You want to have a win as you enter quote unquote free agency. Did you think about that a lot? I was thinking about the whole time, but uh, I did, I did it for my last fight. I'm uh, sorry. My last deal. When I went uh, into the Mac one fight, mm -hmm. I was fighting Mac one. That was the last fight of my deal. And, and, and I feel like it just doubles down on yourself and it shows you a level of confidence. It, it puts a, a ton of pressure on you hundred percent. Cause you don't want to go out on a loss. You don't have any bargaining, uh, leveraging power or anything like that. And it's just a bad look for sure. But um, I don't let that kind of pressure get to me. The pressure more so was on me to get a finish. That that I, I put so much of an emphasis on. Why? Because it was I, I like I said last time I I ended it with my my contract against Mac when I got a finish at the, at the end of the third round. This time I wanted to do the exact same thing and I haven't had a finish since that one. So I was like, you know what? I have to fucking get a finish here. And that's why I, I was going balls to the wall trying to get that fucking trying to get that choke on him. Do you even want to test the waters? Or do you want to just stay in the UFC and listen? I I definitely I I love being in the UFC. I love being a UFC fighter, but um, it doesn't make sense for me to not test the waters, quote unquote. But um, we'll see what they come back with. It would be it would be negligent of me and like disrespectful to my family to not even like hear other numbers. You know what I'm saying? I I would love to hear some other numbers. I'm not going to be sitting around for the next four or five months waiting for a deal. But um, yeah, you want to throw some numbers at me? I'm definitely I'm open to listen. See, I I love that approach. And I feel like some people would take offense to that approach, but you have to see what else is out there. Like that's the whole point of being a pro athlete, right? Yeah. Like NBA players do it. They see what's out there. They come and resign with the Knicks or with the Nets or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. You want to see what your market no. is, but I feel like in MMA for exactly. some reason, it's viewed as a bad thing. Like it's taboo. Yeah. It, uh, nowadays, I feel like it's, it's it, the first time I did it, I feel like it was even more so. Yes. I feel like nowadays, a lot more fight, a lot more fighters are doing it. It's, it's becoming way more common. I remember the first time I did it, I was a little bit more nervous. I was like, they don't really no, Nobody's really doing this. And, and definitely nobody was talking about it in interviews. Like everyone was like, oh, it's hush hush. Yeah. Now it's a lot more common. But uh, but it, you want to see what you're worth. You want to see what, what other people think you're worth. And you know what you're worth. So you want to kind of see if it matches. Yeah. And so can you talk to other people now or is there a period where you have to wait until you could do that i think i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure there's a period so i mean I, i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure i have to ask my manager but uh, okay yeah good 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 question I'm, I'm almost positive there's a period though uh did anyone say anything to you in the back i know dana was there like hey we want you around this and that was was there any sort of like sign that you know we're, we're gonna make this right i didn't see i didn't I didn't see him, but he said uh, he said in his post by a press conference that yeah they're they're for sure gonna give me another deal. So we'll see what, what they come back with. I'm I'm excited to, to hear. I saw him hobnobbing it up in the locker room with Charles. He didn't go say hello to you afterwards. No, I didn't see him. Come <laughs> on, you were the winner. <laughs> I I didn't see him. Yeah, I don't know. Did that? I heard, you? I heard he wasn't out for the, for the whole card, but he, no, no, I didn't. I didn't even. Okay, know it's still Charles. <laughs> but it's all good, bro. I, I, Charles is a good dude. He's a, he's a he's a good kid. I like that kid a lot. I feel like that kid's gonna be top fifteen one of these days. So much props to Charles. Uh, Charles, um, you had that little stretch there, the two losses in a row. Now it's very much in the rear view, two wins in a row. But coming off the two losses, how was the confidence? How are you feeling about your career? That man. It, it, Again, talk about pressure. I feel like my entire career has been pressure. And coming off two losses, going into that that fight at MSG, it was you have to win. You're fighting a guy that's not ranked now. Too all the pressure's on. Uh, he's coming for your spot. He's the hungry one, right? You're the one defending. Uh, the pressure has been on every single fight. But again, I I, I like that. I thrive under that. But uh, the confidence has never been shaken. It's never been wavered. I only have three losses, and all out of my three losses, they've all been competitive fights, and they've all all been against guys that are fucking everybody knows who the guys I lost to, you know what I'm saying they're not they're not fucking Joe Schmoes they're they're guys that are still in the UFC in the top 15 now what's going on with the hair situation we've got the braids but then we've got the thing in the back over there what do we what, what, what do you call this it's a very unique look you know I, I saw Faber did that when he fought uh <laughs> yeah, he a, little, a little bit different my, my, yes mine was a little different Faber did it a little, a little different but um I, yeah I, I just wanted to switch it up I, every fight the last three fights I've been switching up the braids so I wanted to switch it up let it flow in the back a little bit now, do you still have the braids? No, right? They're gone. No, no, I took them out. Yeah, like, just okay. You right just now. got the hair because I think yours is different because you got yeah. the curly hair. Uh, so it like kind of bottom, yeah. Yeah, it kind of ends up different on the back end there. Um, but it listen, you got to look different. You got to stand out. Everyone's wearing the same thing, so it's good to look different. Yeah, that's true. Fascinating times in your weight class. What do you think of the main event? Like how yeah. it went down? Do you, you give your year the victory there? Like do you feel like it was legitimate? Or are you one of those who are like, eh? Where do you fall? It's it's un, it's unfortunate because I was shaping up to be a really good fight. It's one of those things like you almost want to want them to run it back like next week. But you, you obviously know that's not happening. Like Ortega dislocated his shoulder on. It was just a, a fucking fluke of an uh, 
of an accident. It wasn't anything that that really Yair went for an arm bar. It wasn't good. He wasn't going to get the arm bar. I, don't, I think he knew he wasn't going to get it. He was just going to use the scramble up um, and Ortega pulls his arm out out of the socket. So it, yeah, yeah, Yair gets the win, but I'm sure he's not even happy with that win, honestly. And so what do you think happens now? It's like, I feel like the division, the top is a little bit in flux, right? Uh, Alex gets the, uh, the surgery. What, what, what do you think is going to happen at the top there? Oh, so Dana said it too. I think uh, Yair versus Emmett for the interim title while, while um, Alex gets surgery on his hand. And then Alex said he wants to fight uh, the winner of Islam, uh, Islam and Oliveira. Charles. So that, yeah, just to keep the division moving, why not put an interim title? Got this champ's going to get surgery. He's going to fight for another belt. So you got to keep the division moving. And, that, and that's a great fucking fight. Who doesn't want to see Yair and Emmett throw down? So are you, would you be cool with Alex going up? Sometimes that stalls the division, right? It, yeah, it does. But if you're going to do the interim, I guess it, I guess it makes sense. And he's got, he's getting hand surgery. He's not going to, let's say that fight's in October 22nd. He wouldn't be able to fight the winner until what? February? Right. January, February, January, February. So yeah, why not put the interim? But then, then you're going to have the interim champ defending that belt. Probably that's most right. likely what's going to happen. So it, it does muddy, it muddies the water a little bit, but it keeps it going at the same time. In your opinion, how far, like when you watch those guys at the top, you know, you watch the Emmets and the uh, years, even Arnold Allen, which I think would be a great fight. I mean, like this guy has won nine in a row. No one talks about him. It blows my mind. But you watch those guys. How far away do you think you are from competing with those guys? I mean, I, I mean, I'm already fought. We had fight of the year con yeah. uh, contender. We had, uh, I got fight of the night. That one, I fought Cater. We, we got fight of the night. Uh, Barboza fight of the night. So, I mean, I. I don't think I'm far off at all. If you just give me the name, then I'm going to show up. I, I feel like I show up every single time. This is the first fight where I try to show up a little bit, something different. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I got, I got 11 fights in the UFC. 10, the last 10 were fucking stand-up wars. This one, I wanted to show off my, my wrestling, my ground game a little bit. And people are like, what the fuck? You, Shane just wants to wrestle? I'm like, uh -huh. I can't show off that. I can, I, I'm, show, I'm showing you guys that I can do more. I'm not just a guy that just stands and bang. Like I, I can grapple, I can wrestle, I can, I'm good off my back. I can punch, I can kick. I wanted to show off that I can do everything. I wanted to get a, a dominance mission in that first or second round. I was really gunning for that. So uh, I was just trying to show off a little bit more. I, I, I think I am way more well-rounded than I was, than, than, than I've been able to show. And I feel like that, that fight was able to show like yeah. you know, Shane Burgos isn't just a, a stand up and brawl kind of guy. Yeah, I don't think anyone, including Charles, expected that. You did, even though you didn't get the, like, I know you're upset that you didn't get the finish, but you did show that you can do that stuff, which we haven't really seen from you. So you got to take, like, a bit of a moral victory there, no? Yeah, yeah. No, 100%. I got I to gotta be a little bit more optimistic about it, but uh, fuck, man, I, I'm just gutted the way that my legs fucking shut, just, just fucked me in that third round. He, he came on strong. He clearly won that third round and sick to my stomach about, like, it just felt like a, a shitty position to be in. I was like, fuck, man, this is just to end the fight like that. If yeah. had it started like that, it'd be a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? To end it like that, like, ah, that was the last taste in my mouth from that fight. So it's just a, a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, do you think that there's anything, like you just said you went to lift and all this, like, do you think there's anything you can do in training so that something like that never happens again? I'm going to figure that out. I don't, I don't think so necessarily. It was just, I was really putting everything I had in, into not letting go of that position and, and, and making sure I got that finished. So it was a, 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 an extreme lactic acid buildup. Wow. Um, I remember I was talking about this before you came on. We, uh, when we had you in studio, we were doing like a little MMA trivia. You remember that back in the day? <laughs> yeah, of course. Do you yeah, still, yeah, do you yeah. still follow things as much as you did back then? Of course. Yeah. Being in the UFC for the last five and a half years, um, I've definitely, it, it's made me honestly, unfortunately, a little bit less of a fan because my this is what I do to provide for my family. Obviously, this is my this is my career. So it's just like I'm a I'm I'm consumed with this. When I get home, it's like I don't want to think about the UFC right now. I want to yeah. I want to just relax and just eat that and just like go grocery shopping or something. You know what I'm saying so like the big cards I never miss. The, honestly, I never I never miss card period. Let me let me let me rephrase that. The only card I really miss is the fight week before my fight. So if I'm fighting on like like I like yeah. I fought this this weekend. The week, the week before I don't I don't want to watch it. I just want to just fucking zone out, not have it on my mind twenty four seven. But um. Yeah, I'm still a hardcore fan. Man. I love this fucking sport. It's going to be in my life until the day I die. Like once I'm done with the sport, like competing in it, I'm going to be doing something. It'll be some, some way I'm involved. I'm commentating. I'm going to be um, uh, coaching. I'm going to be judging. I'm going to be refing. I'm doing something or all the above with this sport. Judging refing too. I, I saw Dennis Bermudez uh, <laughs> giving you some <laughs> yeah. trivia or like, uh, you know, quizzing you on, on you. Would you really consider that? You'd really want to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Uh, yeah. 
I, I think that more fighters need to get into that because they really understand the positions. They really understand what's dangerous and what's not. They can see if a guy's really in danger or if he's not really in danger, and you you can weigh that heavier or weigh it less. Uh, UFC eighty four. I feel like we don't have enough of that. UFC eighty four. Who's the main event? See, I, I, dude, I was the man at this. Uh, I was in math class. <laughs> I, I was in math class, literally writing every fucking main event down. Eighty four. Um, is that eighty four? Is that BJ Penn? Yes. Against BJ Penn, Joe Stevenson. Ah, so close. Try again. Oh wait, wait, wait. Sean Shirk. Yeah. What? What? Yes, what? There are, I still got it. What was Joe Stevenson? BJ Penn. That was in London. Close. Or England. England yeah, England, England. Yeah, Newcastle. Uh, that was uh, 78, 70, 79, 80, 80. All right. I was going to say 80, but I thought that was too close to 84. No, you yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not no you're good. You're good. You're yeah. good. It, you know, I, I could do all of those from like 65 uh, and then it gets to like, I have to say 220, 230. And the last couple of years it gets foggy. I don't know if it's just, there's too many events yeah. now. All, everything yeah. is just getting all like mixed up. UFC yep. Vegas, this, that. Yeah, dude, I, yeah, I watched the UFC UFC 66 took it over Tito Ortiz. That was oh, my yeah. first ever pay per view that I, that I ordered. That was a phenomenal pay per view. There was like a million finishers on that card. It was awesome. And ever since that one, I I, I was able to name 66 all the way to 120 something. Like the one where uh, it was um Akiyama versus uh Bisping. That 120. Was like the last card I can name up to. There we go. Say 120. <laughs> <laughs> Con did Hardy. Shit, man. What a crazy fight that yep, was. Yep, crazy yep. knockout. Does it, left hook. it, and now does it like, are you, I, I guess it's old hat, but like you're a freaking UFC fighter. You're not just a, you're like, you're a mainstay in the UFC. Do you, do you sometimes yeah. allow yourself to take a step back and be like, holy shit, man, I went from being the kid who was writing, you know, the main events on a piece of paper yeah. in math class to being a guy that fans are going crazy for in New York, undefeated seven to no in New York. Yeah, when 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 people ask or people like say shit like that, and then I take a step back and I'm like, that is pretty fucking cool. Like I wasn't even supposed to be here. Like I was 15 years old finding out, like I just found the sport and then I find out a year later that I gotta get surgery and I'm probably never gonna have to train again. And then now I'm here and I made it to the fucking the the the, the upper the, the highest level you could possibly be at in the UFC, top 15 in the world. It, it's pretty crazy when you sit back and you really yeah, man. It. So in other words, don't be so damn hard on yourself that you didn't get a finish. On a UFC card on ABC, yeah. by the way, A B freaking C. <laughs> Ten years ago, that was not even close to being a thing. That's that's an absolute fact. Yeah, who who would have known the sport would be where it's at? Yes, today? like like this. Ten years is is, is literally like right. This. It's, it's wild. It's really wild. By the way, what was that surgery a year into training that you had to have? Uh, I got scoliosis surgery, so I got a two Harrington rods in my spine. I got oh damn my spine from like. A, yeah, the middle, the middle, basically the whole middle of my spine has two metal rods to correct the scoliosis surgery I had. So my spine used to look like a question mark. Whoa. So I got that fixed. And they, yeah. and they told you, <laughs> like, did they tell you you wouldn't be able to do something like this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He said, I remember breaking down and crying. Like, I just found, like, I just started training for like six or seven months. And I was like, I love it. It's so fun. I was like, I can't not do it anymore. And I was like, all right, whatever, whatever you say, bro. I'm not, I'm not going to do it anymore. Get the surgery. And I came back like three months later, right after the surgery, which was, it was so stupid. I, I, I fucked my back up. Actually. I got like a shoulders under the legs passed in jujitsu and my knees went up to my, to my, to my chest, nothing crazy, but my spine cracked from the top of my neck all the way down oh. to my fucking tailbone and um, every vertebrae. Oh, I threw the, my training part. I threw them off. And I said, get off me, get off me. Get off. And he's like, what happened? You said, I heard that. You good? I was like, I don't know. And I go to straighten up. And every time I straighten up, I was like, oh, oh my God, I'm starting sitting there crying. I'm 16 years old, just got a fucking major surgery. My mom and dad were so mad. I go to the doctor and he's like, dude, I told you not to go back to training, let alone yeah. go back to training three months after the surgery. What are you, what are you doing? He's like, we're going to have to do another uh, MRI, see if, the, see if the rods fuse to your spine. If they didn't fuse, you're going to have to get surgery again. We have to re redo this. And I was like, my fucking dude, that was like the worst experience of my life. I was in a fucking hospital bed for a week. I I, wait, I left the hospital like 115 pounds, 16 years old, 115 pounds. Like I didn't eat, could barely walk. And I was in my head like, no, 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 no. I can't, I cannot get into surgery. I cannot do that. So I didn't do shit. I did not train for the next month or two. I think it was went back got another MRI or an X-ray. And they said, good news. Your, your spine is fused. You can go back to two activities. He didn't say MMA training or anything like that. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I got back to MMA training. How <laughs> long after? 
uh, after, after that, after that appointment, yeah. probably a week after, not even. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. And has it ever yeah, yeah. been an issue again? No, no. Wow. You, Knock on wood. Knock on wood. It's never popped, even now in the UFC, nothing. It's it's never been like, no. wow, that is amazing. Holy yeah. smoke. So you really shouldn't uh, be here. Yeah, 30-something fights, and, and yeah, yeah, exactly. It's only t- telling me I'm never going to do this, and 30-something fights later, a bunch of competitions. Yeah, pretty, pretty wild. Man, what a story. Well, I hope they pay you, man. I hope you uh, you get a nice fat contract and uh, you get some security. How many will, kids do you have now? I got two kids. I got a five-year-old and a one-year-old. Oh, damn. Are you good after yeah. that or are we trying to go for more? I'm good, You're man. Good? I know I'm good. I, I, listen, I got I got two girls and I, and I hear everybody talking about it. I, I think Brendan Schaub did, a, did an interview with um, Tim Kennedy saying like fighters always have girls. And I'm like, shit, I didn't even realize that. But there's a lot of fighters that have gir- only girls like Johnny Hendricks. I remember... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Couple other fighters. He, he, Tim Kennedy said he only had girls. He had to do like something special to get a boy. But I'm good, man. My 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 one year old. She's a little. She's awesome, but she's a little gremlin. So <laughs> I'm good with my my five year old, my one year old. Maybe I'll have uh, some grandkids in the future, way down in the future. I got two brothers right now. Got nephews already, so I'm good. We we sh- and it's true by the way. I, Mark Coleman only had girls. It seems like all you big tough yeah. guys. Uh, you only have girls. I have two boys. So I don't know what it says about me. Um, you, you, you showed a tweet that you sent to us uh, 2017 that you said you you would listen to the MMA Hour on the way to training and the MMA Beat back in the day. Now that we're back, are you still listening or are you off the bandwagon? No, no, I'm still listening. I'm still All listening. Right. But like I said, when I get close to a fight, I try to like yeah, I not you. listen to it. I don't want to yeah. be too consumed with, with fighting. That's yeah, right. but of course, man, I still listen. And you got kids right. now. I mean, you've got, you know, you got to balance things out. I feel you. Um, yeah. Yep. Well, congrats on the win. Well done. Tremendous stuff. And again, I hope you get that nice contract and I hope you get to pick where you, you fight, but uh, you know, if it's, if it's not going to be New York, even though I think it's pretty damn cool that you're killing it in New York. Uh, I hope you get to fight on the West coast. So you don't have to, cause I, I feel you on the 10 o'clock, like by 10 o'clock, I'm, I'm tired yeah. of shit. You know, like I don't want to be fighting at 10 o'clock, <laughs> let alone doing much. So I, when you said that it yeah. spoke to me, I think as dads of young kids, like past 10, yep. it's, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> I, I, Oh, I've always been like that, man. I, I, I give me, I train in the morning anyway. So give me, give me that earlier start time all day. Shane, you're the man. Thank you so much for doing this. Talk to you soon. I appreciate you. Thank you guys. All right. There he is. Hurricane Shane Burgos. Big win for him. Massive win for him on Saturday over Charles Jordan. And uh, yeah, that was really interesting. 